Okay, welcome back to year nine. Uh, we're looking at indices and this video is really the beginning or the proper beginning to our topic. We're going to spend a lot of our time working with these, the index laws. So this will be uh, quite a long video, hopefully uh, not too long, where I'm going to go through the first five index laws. Now some of these were covered last year, so hopefully it will be a little bit of a review. Um, I'll try and make this as clear as possible. Let's look at the first one to begin with. Each of these laws will have a definition, will have a general form of the rule, of the law, why does the rule work, and then we'll do some examples. Now sometimes uh, when you're looking at these, you might look, oh, this is law one, and, and think that you need to memorise all of these words. That's incorrect. You do not need to memorise all of this. You do not need to know that this particular law is law one, for example. What you do need to know, though, is how to use these. These are called laws, but really they are shortcuts. They are really, really handy shortcuts. If we had to do this sort of maths the long way, it would be very tedious, very annoying, very frustrating as well. These are shortcuts. These are going to make our life much easier. Let's look at the first one then. When multiplying powers of the same base, this is really important here, same base. You'll see that in the, the general form where we use letters, the A is written twice. So that indicates these two numbers are the same. When we're multiplying, we add the indices. So you can see here that we've got a to the power of m by a to the power of n. This will be the same as saying a to the power of m plus n. So we are therefore adding these two indices here. We're adding them together. Okay, so what we'll do next is look at why. Why does this work? Imagine you had 2 squared multiplied by 2 to the power of 3. I've rewritten this here, so we can clearly see 2 squared is 2 times 2. 2 to the power of 3, 2 by 2 by 2. If we were to write that all out, I can actually simplify this. I can see that this is actually 2 to the power of 5. If I do this with other examples, what we're always going to find is that this here 2 squared by 2 to the power of 3 is the same as 2 squared plus 3, which is 5. So 2 plus 3 is 5. And you'll see that's what I got down there when I did it the long way. Let's get a little bit of practice with adding the indices when the same base is being multiplied. Powers of the same base. This first one over here. 3 squared by 3 to the power of 5. I am not going to write this out the long way. That's a silly thing to do. We have a shortcut. Let's use it. 3 to the power of 2 plus 5. So this is 3 to the power of 7. Try the next one. Notice we have the same base, both x's. So this is actually x to the power of 3 plus 4. This is x to the power of 7. See how much quicker it is? This one here, I have two bases here that are the same, x times x. Yes, I've got a 4 here, but that's not going to matter. That's not going to matter because this is going to be multiplied by that. All I'm doing when I say the same base is that this one here and that one there, therefore I can add these two indices. So this is therefore 4x to the power of 2 plus 6. So this is 4x to the power of 8. The final one here, this is a little bit trickier. Let's have a look at it. First of all, I can do 2 times 5. 2 fives are 10. A squared times A, well, you can imagine that any number, when there's no index written there, it's actually got a little imaginary one, a little invisible one. So this is A squared times A, which is the same as A cubed, or A to the power of 2 plus 1. Finally, my B's, B to the power of 1 times B squared is B to the power of 1 plus 2 is 3. So my answer there is 10a cubed or a to the power of 3, b to the power of 3. 
Pause where necessary if you'd like to put these examples into your workbook. We should definitely have the law, this part here. Let's look at law two then. This is sort of working uh, in, in an opposite fashion to law one. When dividing powers of the same base, we're going to subtract the indices. So before we were multiplying and adding the indices, we're doing the opposite in both cases here. We're actually dividing the powers this time. So instead of adding, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to subtract. So this is what the general form looks like. a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. So we can see the a part here, the base, is the same. And that's really important. It says that in the definition. The powers of the same base. If these are not the same base, we cannot use this law. They must be the same. So let's have a look. a to the power of m minus n, that's subtracting the indices. Why does it work? Well, let's have a look at this over here. 3 to the power of 5 divided by 3 squared. If I was to write that out the long way, you can see that here is 3 to the power of 5, there's 3 squared. What I can do is, because I've got a fraction here, I can cancel out common factors. So if I've got a 3 here and here, well, that will divide to be 1. So that's actually, I can cancel it out. I've got another one on the top and another one on the bottom. I actually am left with just these 3s here. I haven't quite left myself enough room here, have I? But actually, what I'm left with is 3 to the power of 3. If you do that by subtracting the bases, let's have a look. 3 to the power of 5 minus 2, well, 5 minus 2 is 3. So this is actually a really handy shortcut. Don't do this. We don't want that. That's going to take lots of time. These laws are lovely shortcuts. We can do this in one step. Let's look at these examples then. Here we go. Just move this out of the way for you. There we go. All right. This one here, that's the one I've just done, isn't it? Just up in the corner. Let's do it the short way, straight away. 3 to the power of 5 over 3 to the power of 2 is 3 to the power of 5 minus 2. You can actually skip that step there. It does not need to be written every time. 3 to the power of 3 is my answer. Let's do this one. Same base, so I'm subtracting the indices. So this is a to the power of 7 minus 4. It's also a to the power of 3. This one here, we've added a little bit of complexity because we actually have coefficients. We've got numbers out the front. This is easy though, look, 6 over 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Let's subtract the indices, 5 minus 3. So this is actually equal to 3x squared, 5 minus 3 is 2. Finally, this last one is written a little bit different, but it means the same thing. This line here we know means divide, or it can be written like this. You might like to rewrite it like that if you wish, or you can just recognise that we would be subtracting the indices because we have the same base. And there's our answer. Pause to write down these examples and also for the law as well. Next law, raising to a power. Raising a power to a power. So this sounds really confusing, but what we mean is, have a look in the bracket here. We've got a number raised to a index, so this is a power here, and that's actually being raised to a power as well. So to raise this to a power to a power, we have to multiply the indices. So what this means is basically, this number here will multiply by that one there. In general form, I would write a to the power of mn. Remember, there's a time symbol in the middle there. We just don't write it. We're a bit lazy mathematicians. Why? Why is this the case? Well, let's have a look. 2 to the power of 3 squared. So we're squaring that whole term. That means that whole term must be multiplied by itself, which is what I've written underneath. Now, to get my answer, I actually add the indices. That's what we did in the first law. 
So 2 to the power of 3 by 2 to the power of 3 is the same as 2 to the power of 6. Now, there is a shortcut. Have a look. 3 times 2 is the same as this 6 here. So instead of writing this term out twice and then adding the indices, I can go straight from this step down to the bottom by multiplying those indices. Let's have a look at it in practice then. a to the power of 4 squared. Multiply the indices. 4 times 2 is 8. We'll do the same with this one x squared to the power of 6, 2 times 6, 12. See how much quicker this is? Rather than write this out, I wouldn't have to do this one too much. But this one here, this could be so tedious. Imagine writing this out every time and then adding the indices. That would be a bit of a nightmare, wouldn't it? We don't want to do that. This is a lovely shortcut. This one here, 5 to the power of 4 to the power of 3. So 5 is my base, 4 times 3 is 12. And the last one here, 7 squared to the power of 5. My base is 7, multiply the indices, 2 fives, 10. And that is the next one. Pause here and enter these examples into your workbook or summary book if you wish. And let's look at number four. A power of a product is the product of the powers. What does this mean? Let's have a look. Here we have a product in the bracket. So A times B is what this means. And that's a product. So what we have is the power of a product. So power of these two things being multiplied together. This is going to be the same as the product of the powers. So if I actually take that m, raise a to the power of m, but also raise b to the power of m, these are being multiplied together, I get the same answer. So let's have a look using some numbers. Here we have 2 times 3 squared, or 2 times 3 to the power of 2. Now I know that 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 squared is 6 times 6, that's 36. So that's one way to work it out. It will also be equal to this. If I take the power of each of these numbers in the product, so 2 to the power of 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2, that's what I've written there, I can see that 2 squared is 4 and 3 squared is 9. Multiplying those together, 4 9s, it's also 36. So these two are actually the same thing. Let's do some examples of that here. So this is a product. This is 2 times x to the power of 4. So let's take this power for each of these products in here. So what I mean by that is 2 to the power of 3, so 2 here to the power of the 3 there, multiplied by x. Now this is uh, part of our, our previous law here, 4 times 3. Now we can finish that off. We can leave it as 2 to the power of 3 or we should be able to write down the answer to that. That's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 8x to the power of 12 is our answer there. Let's do the same with this next one. So what I'll do, I might do this in two steps just to make it a little bit more clear. a to the power of 4 to the power of 3 is what we're doing. So that is a to the power of 4 times 3 multiplied by b to the power of 2 times 3. This is equal to a to the power of 12, b to the power of 6. So I've multiplied these out. Final one, again, we have to raise every product within the, the bracket to the power that's on the outside. So 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 4 to the power of 3. That one I'm happy to leave like that.
We are going to get a quite a large number if we multiply that out. So let's leave it like that. That is simplified. Pause here for your examples in your book. Last one. Okay, so likewise to the one before, the previous law, this is looking at a quotient or a fraction like this here. The power of a quotient is the quotient of the powers. So all this means is if we have a fraction like this being raised to a power, what we must do is raise each number in that fraction to that same power. This will be now equal. Why does this work? Have a look at this, 2 over 3 squared. I can rewrite that as 2 over 3 multiplied by 2 over 3. If I multiply the numerators and the denominators, as I do with multiplication of fractions, I get 4 over 9. Let's do it using the law. If I must raise each of these numbers here, the 2 and the 3, by the 2, I get 2 squared over 3 squared. Let's finish that off. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. So what I've done here is a shortcut. Instead of rewriting these fractions here side by side and multiplying the numerators, multiplying the denominators, what I can do is raise each number to the power and then evaluate. So I get 4 over 9 for that one. Let's have a look at some examples. This one here, 2 squared over 5 squared. So that power, each each number within that fraction must be raised to that power. Equals 4 over 25. I'm just going to leave it like that. Simplified fraction form. This one here. m to the power of 5 over n to the power of 5. This one here, remember this is a product in here. It must be raised, each, each uh, factor within that product must be raised to that same power. So 2 to the power of 3, x to the power of 3, over y to the power of 3. Now I've run out of space, but we can actually write that there as an 8. I might do that nice and small. 8, x to the power of 3, over y to the power of 3. And this last one here, this would be 3 squared a to the power of 2 times 2 over 2 squared equals 3 squared is 9 a to the 4 over 2 squared is 4. And there are some examples for that law. Pause it here if you wish and up here as well for the general form of that law. Apologies for all the examples, but I think we need lots of practice with this. We will go through this further in class. Thank you for listening.